Well, I was thinking, I, I, know, what, I, I know what it sounds like when doves <laughs> cry, but what about worms? Um, <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, a show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. How's everybody doing? This fine, fantastic Saturday night, I am Vin Stone here at LGC Actual in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux, joined every week by our blue-shirted Canadian. You know, I'm not a red shirt, I'm a blue shirt. <laughs> you're a blue shirt, man. You're like a red shirt on hard mode. And... Yeah. The giggling doom himself, the OG, Pedro Mateus, hell boy in Britannia, together with you at home, helping us form, well, your chat room dynamic helping us form, Cocaine Voltron. All right. Eh. I'm done with the radio. Well, I can't, damn it. I was <laughs> trying to get done with the radio announcer. I was like, no, this is how you sound, you old. Um, <laughs> this is your life now. <laughs> no, no, save me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's been going on in your life, organs, man? Pedro, you, you've you made a life-altering change, one might even say. It's a, a big thing in a young man's or lady's life when you go from one distribution yes. to the next. <laughs> you tried to so build basically, own. goodbye, Solus. Uh, had a good run, a year and some change. Uh, and yeah, the, the, I needed to change because i got that um intensity pro it's like can't use it because no dkms <laughs> so yeah no that was like the death knell for solace at least on this box and it is this box it's my main pc it needs to work so yeah i was very 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 reluctant to get rid of it but kd neon it it it's working and took less than two hours to actually get everything up and running so that was nice I, listen man <laughs> i'm really happy that you're finally running ubuntu jordan what's up with you oh um, the the genuinely the most exciting thing that happened this week is um i had a bench press pr oh i did a pull uh, request three... for bench press how's that work yeah mm -hmm. i uh i i i, I requested strider merge in about 345 pounds about uh -huh. 350 so uh I could have got, I, I could have got, I tried uh, 355. <laughs> I didn't get it because I lost my brace. I'm very disappointed in myself because I know I could have gotten it, but still. Yeah, well, bench pressing 50 pounds above my weight is pretty nice. So, no, that's awesome, man. I mean, did you yeah. try the tree fitty like five after you did the tree fitty? Um, <laughs> no, it was uh, 345 to uh, 355. Okay. Yeah, and I failed on 355, and I know why I did it. But yeah, no, I'm it's it's exciting because I thought that like benching four oh five would be like very far away, but I'm pretty sure if I like worked at it semi seriously, I could get there in about a year. Gonna be jacked. It's gonna be Yeah, I'll be, yeah. Able, I'll be able to lift about fifty percent of Pedro's mom. So that'll be exciting. Oh nope. Nope. Not touching that. My mom is very tiny here it and comes, skinny. Here it comes. <laughs> he just got he just like, hey, look, a joke was made. It was a mom joke. Get it? Ah. So, um, Dude, very exciting news uh, for me. I, I've been waiting for the fiber fairy. <laughs> that okay. Anyway, I mean that that's a different fiber fairy. Man. It is. It's it the is. dietary fiber fairy. To roll by my house and bring the strands of light into my heart, and finally, uh, might have been Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I hear the rattling outside of like bucket trucks, and they finally pulled in to my neighborhood, stringing that glorious AT&T fiber that might be lit up tomorrow to five years from now, or possibly never. It could just be there as a cruel joke. So when I saw that, I was very happy. It was like, it's a good thing I didn't just order the Doxis 3.1 cable modem that's on its way to my fucking house right now. I, I, I live I live that feel, man. That is that is one hundred percent every time I make a major purchase, I'm just paying attention to the news because like something will get cheaper, something will be revealed to be terribly wrong with the thing I just bought. Yeah, but I kind of walked out and it is like, all right, that that sucks. By the way, Charter, good on you. Getting that MAC address, like boom, you're done, no hassle. I got my OFDM channel that's working. But here's the way I feel about that though. And I was like, if that's because we were talking last Saturday 
It's like, yeah, you know, if I do end up ordering the mo- modem, of course, fiber would be it. Here's the fiber trucks driving by. Like, ha ha, it was written. I'll take the trade, Brad. I'll take the trade. I will, 100%. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is our horse still high in fiber? Uh, the, ho- the horse is actually low in fiber, despite the fact that it has multiple stomachs for rumination. It just produces nothing but shit. It's the Steam Linux Update of the Week. We get it, bro. Steam Vapes. Dude, check it out. <laughs> Clearly. Cloud Gaming <laughs> from Steam Database, man. Valve is working on Steam Cloud Gaming. According to the partner site, uh, code update. Partners will need to sign... That into terms and could it be a competitor? Anything can be a competitor. Jordan, are you a competitor to Google Stadia? Yes, my stream is very, very powerful. You can see that on this hidden camera that you get for being a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to look at it, that, man. Uh, it's a little bit of code. So naturally, the internet was like, oh my God, speculate. And, you know, this would 100% make all my dreams come true if. If it has rentals with the option for like local downloads and I don't have to do everything over the internet, I would be very happy with that. And you you do have to keep in mind, no matter what this is, there's Valve time factored into it along with Valve Mm -hmm. has been known and has shown that they play the long game. They are a privately owned company. They're not trying to appease shareholders. They're like, okay, we want to get set up for something that's going to make us money a decade from now. So different type of ball. And also Jordan, uh, outside of your camera being slightly tilted to the wrong direction. Uh, <laughs> why have I been seeing so many people going, well, this is going to be free, right? Magical, magical thinking. I mean, to, to be fair, a lot of, a lot of um, Steam features are introduced for free to allow mm-hmm. people to like, you know, to encourage people to use the platform more. I don't know, though, because I'm curious if this will basically amount to like a PC rental through Steam Remote Play, because like you can now play on other people's computers um, or if Valve has like something more of a bespoke solution in mind. Then then a thought occurred, like what if, what if Uber, but with gaming PCs, right? Like people people spend a lot of money. I, on I try to play a car. Computers. I wait, I try to play a game and a car shows up at my house. <laughs> exactly. No, no, like it, it, it's, it's like ride sharing, but for like powerful gaming PCs, because you're not using it most of the time. You're usually at work or something, right? So, so somebody uh, shows I mean, up. Valve my, already wait, no, I like my version. That. Somebody just comes into your house and like plays <laughs> yeah, and, and takes your computer and takes no, 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 they, yeah. they just sit down, make themselves at home, have a little sandwich. Yeah. Valve already has sort of that going on with the Steam Remote Play. So if you have the Steam Play app for your phone or your tablet or any other computer, uh, where you log into your account and you, if your main computer is on with all your games installed, you can stream. They already do that. So. I mean, if they are going to do, like, the full-on cloud gaming thing, like Stadia, it might as well, everyone else is, so why not? And they do have their own backbone, their own VPN uh, to drive all this, so they can do it. Every yeah. time I think about that, I think about something downloading at, like, 4 megabits from Steam. It's, suppo- it's supposed to be secure. It will happen, it's, not supposed yeah. to be, it's not supposed to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it. We have a bit of an anniversary to celebrate. You might not know it uh, by looking at it, but this is an old. Why are we seven of up? them? Yeah, this is old news, man. This is from November 6, twenty twelve. What could this possibly be, George? I mean, Pedro. Yeah, it, it means that uh, November six, twenty twelve, uh, the Steam for Linux beta was made available. Uh, it was just for Ubuntu, and it was just for a select number of people. Now, um, to which if the you happen to be collectively went, yeah, there's a way around this. Yeah, here, yeah. Here, here's the dev file. Go, go extract it's it. It's like, oh, it. so instead of just starting Steam, you can just append Steam forward slash library to it and you get past the whole, you're not in this beta thing. But there was also the thing, it's like, oh, you may get VAC banned if you try to do that. So as the person who was like doing the gaming stuff for Fodentu at the time, it's I like, okay, that one. Valve, um, I don't want to get banned, but... I am already using the beta because someone ha- had actually figured out how to get it running on Fedora very quickly. It's like a couple hours after the announcement was made, it was already running on Fedora. So that didn't take very long. <laughs> and then I, and I know I told the story before, because I actually had to get through Steam's 
uh, Steam support to one of their legal people. It's like, yo, um, I need to talk to a legal person so to know whether or not we can ship the Steam client in the Fodanti repos. And eventually, I did hear back from them. And eventually, like, yes, they then. gave it to an intern that wrote you back, like, sure, whatever, Brad. <laughs> yeah, no, the, whatever, the, they did specifically say it's like okay we're we are going to be updating the terms of service to um s reflect this but basically you can as long as you don't touch uh anything that would make the steam client um in any way uh liable by gpl or don't change anything in the um runtime folder so and and, and with those and what, two what a, away we go what, what away we've come though because it started off as being ubuntu only and then ubuntu's like yeah you know all that 32-bit libraries that all your things <laughs> depend on we're not we're not going to ship those anymore <laughs> Ooh. I, I i i will i will say though like an, another 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 thing hit their seventh anniversary re recently and that's linux gamecast weekly coincidence well, I, I, man listen they, they might be linked i'm not 100 percent on that i'll have to consult my red yarn but <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird, man. When you think it was like, wait, that many, how many years is that? And you count a bump and you think we started this show, how we got to track that down. Like how long before were we doing the show? I, it, it was, it was, it was a few months at least. Yeah. We, we were before. I mean, I came in at like halfway uh, into the first year. Mm. So yeah, it. P Pedro yeah. is illegal, by the way, Linux Nehru. It's he true. Is. In if, you, if you are, if, if, if you are an individual, I was legal individual in two thousand and four. But whatever. if you are an individual and your name is Pedro, you are breaking the law. You're going to jail. Breaking the law. Uh, client beta. Check it out. A couple of new things. Uh, they brought back small mode. Yay! Hey, my eyes finally. <laughs> um, this is kind of uh, very very happy about that. And even though I don't know if they work or not, the broadcast settings now has a drop down menu to like select whether or not, which you would think um, everything would work because another thing none of us have tested yet. I've uh, been trying to hurt cats. <laughs> it supposedly on this, works now. <laughs> right. Is, I mean, Pedro, I'll give you. You, you get like a bonus cookie for we tried um <laughs> we did <laughs> we tried uh go back and watch that stream but uh now that remote play together supposedly works you would think that should just click that button and it works they did do some updates to the vapi decoding uh so that's for intel right well i guess amd can use that too yeah though, right All right. nvidia yeah. too uh, in the new vote drivers yeah, the the Atomic Ass will also be very, very happy to know that they're fixing some bugs Steam has with NFS shares. So if you're crazy enough to try and access your games over the network, then you'll have fewer problems. I thought you were gonna say there was a weeb category now. Um I mean I mean there is, but that's just in the Steam store. Oh. That's just a store in general though, man. I mean, it's there. It's true. It's true. Dude. And something about the screenshot key not being um properly addressed if say you re you change that to something else and then try to bind some other thing to what f12 kind of changes it from anything other than f12 i mean what are you there doing are games with that have f12 a... as like a hotkey so okay just yeah, so as, a, as a general rule i do not play games that use the function keys at a principle i mean uh half-life nope the game we're throwing chairs at if you're playing with a keyboard it's kind of hard to tell from my controller yeah. Well, speaking spe speaking of control, um, every every time I see this headline, I think early access, but it's not early access. It's it's Electronic Arts. So Origin mm -hmm. and Steam, there 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 was that vague tweet posted a couple weeks ago where they're like, oh, we're gonna post a cup with some Steam on it. What could it mean? Well, it means that your saves and your achievements and whatnot can be synced between Origin and Steam. So that means that they're gonna start selling some EA games on Steam. Uh, you'll have all the unlockables and whatnot transferred between both accounts. Uh, there's some end user license agreement stuff that needs to be updated as well. But I mean, this is, this was sort of the problem that occurred when, uh, oh yeah, then, then there's this blog post here. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, 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 we'll get, we'll get, we'll get to, we'll get to that in a minute. Cause I think, I think we, we, that this deserves to have some time spent on it, but, okay. um, but yeah, like um, this, this is a solution that we've seen Microsoft play around with a little bit, trying to sync uh, achievements across multiple platforms. Because 
we live we live in an era now where you can buy the same game on like five different stores and like your saves aren't preserved between them and it gets annoying so having some semblance of cooperation between these companies is a little bit nicer than having to copy save files back you, and forth do back and forth I think that what we're seeing is Stadia putting enough fear into where everyone else outside of Epic, Epic's munching on a glue stick, giving away games. Uh, everyone else with half half a brain's like, we need to circle the wagons, lads. Yeah, I, I, I think everyone else is going. Uh, that. that Steam thing is still pretty popular, so how about we put some games on that? Well, you, you get to think you like fiscally, it makes sense to go out and be like, hey, man, we're just going to do our own thing, and we're not going to worry about you know Steam taking its cut. Then they do that thing, but Steam gets to the point in the popularity of like it makes more financial sense to have your own thing, but have that option. And you know, why why limit customers? You're never going to become Steam. The only way you beat Steam is with a fucking time machine and <laughs> or, or or a ton of or a ton of Chinese capital, but <laughs> no, yeah, ten time cent machine. money behind Epic, yeah. Uh but yeah. All I'm curious about is the actual video games. Uh, apparently, the first one is going to be the new Star Wars thing that EA is doing. Incognito All Man, thank, for, thank you for that. Um, the My face. Yeah, no. oh, they're going to oh. <laughs> they're going to bring the new Star Wars game to Steam, and it will require Origin. So my question is, how will um, Proton handle the Origin? I would I would think that um I would I would definitely think that EA is looking at some of the stuff that Steam offers in terms of like platform tools mm -hmm. and are going mm -hmm. yeah like to to Ven's point it can expand our customer base through no effort of our own Proton will run these yeah. games for us on like non supported platforms and you know if they and if they start raising too much shit we'll just vac ban them right um and what I want to know is when no, which one EA is Origin correct yes yes okay. When that launched, they didn't they make it where any EA titles that you had on Steam you could automatically get transferred to your origin account. Some of them, ah, not all. I don't. Know. I <laughs> remember reading something to that effect. I would like to see that the other way because I have a copy of Apex Legends. That <laughs> maybe that free. No. <laughs> well, it might be now. It came with my video card. Right. But uh, but yeah, to 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 Ven's earlier point, there's a bit of a blog post from you know Microsoft. It's very rare that we have um, we Dude, have Microsoft. We were talking blogs. in the pre pre super shows. And the title of this, everyone, um, EA in Visual Studios Linux support. Now this is posted on the Microsoft blog, to which I said, "This is an Onion article from ten years ago, man." Like <laughs> no, no, it isn't. <laughs> if I this is what I would have said, that's from the Onion, man. If you would have showed me this. A decade yeah. ago, there's no way. Yeah, uh, they're, they're they're talking about how um, Visual Studio can like hook into the WSL for doing uh, remote compiles for uh, Linux apps from Windows. Uh, apparently, apparently EA actually uses a uh, CLang internally for a lot of their compilation stuff. So uh, what they end up doing is they end up like building it on Linux and then building it on Windows as well. Um, and it, it's just talking about it's it's just how 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 to actually hook up uh, Visual Studio to a remote machine to do uh, remote compilation. In a Canadian cross format, way to blame us, Microsoft. <laughs> I, I I had nothing to do with this, um, but yeah, um, it, it's bas it's basically Microsoft posturing themselves like, look how we, we we understand that all your enterprise apps are being done are being run on Linux, so look how easy it is to write Linux apps on Windows. <laughs> Strange times, these. The moon okay, future, man. New version yeah. of Proton. It kind of dropped on us last night, and we're like, wait, what? What's it? Yep. Moon magic? Yeah, yeah, I got the uh, the update and I immediately went to the GitHub and the post wasn't there. So I had to wait a couple of hours, refresh, and then there it is. Okay, Proton 4.11-8. And uh, the big one, like the really big one here, is that they include VKD3D, which provides Direct 3D12 support. So yeah, those DX12 uh, games, now you can translate them back to the proper um, graphics layer. Vulcan, Dude, that is. <laughs> it sounded like you said "graphic slayer." <laughs> graphic slayer, it is. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they also mentioned some improvements for the Rockstar launcher and Graf uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. At which point, I'm inclined to ask, "What do you mean by 
improvements because uh, so last I it, checked, I, oh, that I, I, lodger I, I, is broken. It needs fixing, not improving. So I, I, I have I have a theory. <laughs> I have a theory because okay. uh, there, there, there was a post on uh, Linux underscore gaming where they're saying like, hey man, Red Dead Redemption 2 for PC just came out, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't work in Proton normally, but, 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 but if you rename the EXE to GTA 5, then all of a sudden it works. So maybe this has something to do with that. Um, what you have to do is rename the Red Dead. <laughs> First, you have to buy this. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it's a clever oh. plan to sell more titles. In, indeed. Mm -hmm. um, also, also the new uh, Devil May Cry game is fully playable, apparently. So that's pretty neat. There's an update for F Audio and Wine Mono, and the w the the DXVK D9VK stuff we've been covering the past couple weeks. That's folded into Proton as well. And well, that means that they got some of the uh, Mono uh, sorted out. That was the only issue with DMC was having mm -hmm. to use Proton tech tricks to do that. If you're going to stream that, save yourself some time, man. They will copyright claim everything Ooh. in that game. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Like they won't they won't hit your account, but they're like they will Nintendo it. You know, like it's all ours. <laughs> it's our oh, money now. Oh, Goodbye. Right. <laughs> all, 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 all the monies. All right. Uh we have some updates this week. Uh, we do. It's one of those psychopathic uh, dead pixel cells. games. It, it it's dead cells. It's a roguelike uh action platformer, rogue legacy style game. And uh they have the fifteenth update which is uh, codenamed the corrupted update and yeah it basically introduces a new biome which is optional you don't need to go through it to follow like the main line of the uh, the game and apparently the bluebirds are very very difficult or so they say uh the they say that the the main uh like thing that they're trying to do with this update is actually rebalance some stuff and I very much like that, uh, because when I play the game, I feel like it's kind of pointless as you get to the, uh, the latter levels, and it, it becomes kind of pointless to, like, try and go for the chests and get the weapons that are inside those chests, because the weapon you have is probably a lot better, and you're not taking a ton of damage trying to get to that chest. So, yeah, rebalancing everything and making sure that the paths uh, that you can take are properly labeled and things well, the are actually laid out accordingly so that, let's say you get into an area like the corrupted area from this update, you immediately get a cursed chest as you get in. So that's... Well, that's all that, very that, nice. that, that, that one that one specifically for the uh, corrupted area. No, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, to, to your to your point, right? Optimization is definitely a thing in these games, especially when a lot of the content is procedurally generated, like in Dead Cells. Yep. Because you know you want people to ex as a, as a game developer, you want people to experience the game in totem. And when there are large swaths of the game that will just be ignored because they are too difficult, or if you're trying to speed run, it's not optimal, or if Mm -hmm. For what, what, whatever reason you have in place, um, it's it's good to go back and say why aren't people playing with these with with this content and what can we do to encourage people to try it out. So uh, balancing these balancing these biomes is a good idea. Also, adding the map hint room is a, rune is a nice usability touch as well because you know it'll say like oh here's here's where all the goals are so you're not like where the fuck am I going I don't understand yep. what is happening. <laughs> That's always a great thing I like in games. That is, I think I would really like Salt and Sanctuary if they're like, hey, look, go do this thing other than have that fucko. So. <laughs> yeah, a, 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 li a little bit of direction. Yeah. Just, just, just a push. Just we like, don't want the you, need, you need to be, yeah, just we, go, we go, go there and figure it out. We, we don't need a big glowing, like, diamond that shows up. Like our next game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> Definitive Edition yeah. is out. The fine people at Feral have dropped it, and uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, go ahead, Pedro. You say your one line. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's about the uh, bundle. And the way that you, you usually buy games on Steam is you get the game. That, that's it. And then you can get the DLCs or you get the whole thing. With this one, well, you can't get just a game anymore. You need to no, get you everything. No, you can't, man. I mean, it doesn't have anything yeah. to do with Feral, <laughs> but here's the thing. If we're taking a look at this, uh, because, you know, this game's coming up on a year old, and we're like, hey, the game's been 20 bucks before. Before that, you had your base game plus, like, $100 worth of hats, effectively. I know it's like suits and stuff like that. Now, that's gone. You can only get the Definitive Edition which includes all this, but it's 46% off for 59, well, 
yeah, I can't even get that. I'm logged in, but it's regularly like, no, it's not. That's right. Cool. Yeah, it's 60 <laughs> bucks. 60 bucks, and it's saving you money by forcing you to buy the stuff that you probably didn't want in the first place. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like you pointed out in the notes, people uh, apparently can't buy it Ooh. because uh, there was a bit of redundancy in the... Uh, I think they fixed it now, but there was a bit of redundancy in the bundle because it was a bundle within a bundle. And so when you bought... Uh, this bundle, it would pick up on the other bundle and say, no, uh, one of the items in your cart already offers one other item in your cart, so you can't make this purchase. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> you fuck that up? <laughs> you can buy it directly from Feral, but uh, that's the best way to do it. People were having issues buying it from Feral earlier, but it was that was a completely different thing. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I kind of wish they'd break out the regular game again, but hey, if you've been waiting, I knew we were. So, I, I mean, it it kind of brings up like the the people who want to get this for for cheap were probably better off burning the heretic purchase, right? Like that's yeah, it doesn't really reward waiting, <laughs> and no matter what, how much you discount, removing an option is never prosumer. Mm -hmm. Indeed. No. So, <laughs> hey, man. But, uh, but you know, in, in, glo in glorious Soviet Republic, there are no consumers. Bears bury you. Yeah. Uh, bears, <laughs> vodka, balalaikas is out. You can buy it for a buck. <laughs> Be a drunk bear. Shoot people. The game. Hey, the important thing, the year 1941. Indeed. You play as, <laughs> you play as glorious Russian soldier. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's, it, yeah, it's literally just a game where you play a drunk bear and you shoot Nazis. What's, what's there to not like? Um, yeah, I don't see a downside. T-pose. Yeah. This Listen, could you, be <laughs> the latest entry in the best game of 2019. Yeah. And I, and I mean, like, uh, for, for a, for a buck, like, you can't get vodka that cheap without risk, go, without risking going blind, so... <laughs> Yeah, I just looked at that and I saw the grass and I saw the T-posing models. It's like, oh, I can smell the unity from here. Well, glorious mm. Soviet unity, comrade. Yeah, it, requires, <laughs> yeah, it does require some DirectX 9 under, under Linux, Dude. though. So, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's unity. It's bringing people together. Like Mother Russia. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of wanted to I kind of want to do a stream of this just because it, it just looks so stupid. But it, it's my kind. Of well, stupid. it is priced to sell in that respect. Yeah. It is pretty <laughs> cheap. I mean, I think it's currently on sale. It's like less than two quid. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, no, normally it's like three fifty. So, <laughs> right. I, not, I, if you miss uh, the sale, you're not going to be like, oh, man, that's out of my like, price range. Like, like, like I said, if you're, if you're going to take that money and spend it on vodka anyways, you're probably going to go blind. Indeed. So this this is the weirdest sequel to Guiana Sisters I think I've seen. This is the 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 Coma <laughs> Two Vicious Sisters. What is this? The Coma that laughs? Yeah, no, fine, yes. I, I wish. <laughs> I wish this is this is supposed to be like a knockoff of like uh, the Korean horror genre. This okay, um, all right. Do you remember like the Korean horror genre phone camera game we played seven years yes. ago? Yes. I don't remember what it was called, it, but it, it wasn't the it, coma. It, it, it was a ripoff of Fatal Frame. I don't think it was Korean. I think it might have been Indonesian, actually. It might have been Indonesian. Anyway, this is a 2D version of that. Yeah, yeah. Pr pretty much. <laughs> Um, it's, it's in early access. You can get it for about 13 bucks, which isn't too bad for, um, which isn't too bad for uh, early access game. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like a side scrolly puzzle solving RPG thing. And yeah, if you, if you want creepy Asian people to chase you, this is your game. Hey man, it could be like creepy Canadian people. It could, that, but that, that, that game would star Sandy Martin. Nah. -uh. <laughs> With cameo appearances from both Jordan and Maddie. <laughs> Man, I don't know. There's a lot of FMV in the 2D. What are we looking at? Eleven ninety nine. Yeah, you might want to yeah. check it out if it's, it's your thing. It's, it's ten bucks, right? Like for early, cons considering like our normal gripe is, wow, this early access game is like thirty dollars. This isn't. Yeah. This isn't particularly <laughs> egregious. Only needs four gigs of RAM, AMD GPU, three gigs. All right, Sound Blaster, pl pl earphones. It is a pl 2D. plus play alone. Yeah. Got you oh. covered. Their game got you covered. <laughs> oh. No friends. Hashtag no friends. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it uh, for the um, Steam Update of the Week. Yeah, coming up next, we got drivers. We're going to talk to you about drivers for 20 minutes. Honk, honk. <laughs> beep, beep.
And okay, it's the usual spiel. We're going to uh, basically take our clothes off, whore ourselves out for, for a little minute bit, there, and I was then we'll get do to a the worm news. Imitation, and I, like, man, <laughs> I don't know how to. What do, what? Oh man! Oh man! If you just like got up and moved the camera onto the floor and started like doing the worm, that would be amazing. Well, I was thinking. I, I <laughs> know what I, I know what it sounds like when doves cry, but what about worms? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, we 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 played worms on stream. We don't ever mic a worm. I'm like cry, oh, scream. <laughs> All right. So are those like unicorn tears? But wormy. I, I I I mean, if you if you do, if you want to donate some tears worm or some juice. other stuff, you can you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. We got one of those support ribbon objects things that has our links to our Patreon and our Libra Pay and our store and our PayPal and our wish list. And if you want to send us some Bitcoin, that's worth. Between three thousand dollars and two dollars, you can. Yay! Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> being, being a Patreon is pretty cool. You get access to the show notes early. You get access to the Discord. You can. Uh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, we, we we got we got uh, we got I, we're, we we play some games sometimes on streams. You can RSVP <laughs> to them. That's pretty good. And if you get show note access, <laughs> then you can you know yell at us in the week and tell us why we're wrong and provide links and we'll talk about what you said in the show notes, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we got a store. You can buy yourself some Linux Gamecast merch if you want. Cover your shame with our shame. <sighs> yeah, um, we got we got, we <laughs> we have we got, we, got, we <laughs> yeah we we yeah because we 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 sell it at, on our on our store. Um, yeah, we got wish lists for myself for the studio for Pedro. Uh, if you want to end up on Frank's fuck wall, you want to be one of his fuck buddies. You can buy some stuff off a wish list. It helps us um, amalgamate equipment for the studio, like. Um, Networking hardware, audio equipment, software, hardware, all that good stuff. Chairs, butter infusers. Give it to us. Butter chairs. But butter chairkin. Butter yeah. infused chairs. It's kind of brilliant, man. Um, everything we get <laughs> goes back into the show for better or for worse. We try so we try so hard. Man, it is fun. Uh, oh let's just God, do everything on Linux and let's just do a bunch of shows. Let's just do this. And we do our show on Wednesday. Plus, we get all of our extra streams and uh, we get a pre pre super shows and a little bonus episode we like to throw to the people kicking a few quid in our direction over at Patreon. You get a little customized thing and go back and listen to that. It's our production meeting and we invite you to join that in Discord an hour before we go live every Saturday night. And, you know, kind of both ways. We talk about yeah. things, we get the feedback. Speaking it of Patreon too, nice. uh, we got we got some people we got to thank. Some awesome people like the Admiral JT, Jonas, and Linux Nuru for uh, re-upping their Patreons. Come we back. missed you guys. Back well, like back. scoliosis. Well, <laughs> welcome into the fold. Let us let us give you a big tight hug that will a big wormy hug, a big wormy <laughs> hug filled with white excretion. Monster. All right, Vulcan <laughs> updates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's this is just the beta driver. I installed it. It works. I like it. I think the big thing in this is, uh, what one point one spec update, right? Uh, that that came in the last one. Uh, this one introduces yeah. a new um, a new extension. Okay. Um, it's uh, the Vul Vulcan Chromo separate depth depth pencil layout. Separate layouts. death Vulcan. Yeah, so Vul Vulcan <laughs> death. So I I looked into the API documentation to understand um what this thing actually does. So basically, there's an attribute that before you would have to by setting one you would set the other, uh, and in some scenarios that's not what you want to do. So you can set this on your object, and then you can set the uh, aspect depth bit or the aspect stencil bit without needing to specify the other one, and you can have them as um, separate values, which is pretty handy if you are a Vulkan developer. There's also some better HDR support and some fixes for F1 2017 for people who are still playing uh, F F1 2017 in 2019 on Linux. I think it's pretty good on NVIDIA, man. I mean, fixing that, fixing Proton, and again, I installed it. I looked at it and like, okay, hey, look, DaVinci doesn't work, which I'm always playing Neo Dodge Bullet with that, to which I left myself a note after I'd uninstalled and rolled back my drivers. It's like, oh, you have to relink CUDA, you stupid noob. And pro tip from old man Vin. Pedro, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, I guess I should know since I reported a bug about uh, the original Neverwinter Nights to NVIDIA when the, you know, 1080 was brand new because there was an issue there and they fixed it. So they're pretty good at, like, fixing bugs with legacy stuff. So I guess it's good on them for improving no, behavior the internet, and the internet memory says situations. NVIDIA hates Linux. They hate freedom and open source. No, I no, mean, they, they do don't. hate freedom and open source, but they don't hate Linux. 
<laughs> yeah, they don't hate Linux, but yeah. Uh, the No, they improve behavior in low memory situations, which it, I guess it's good that they're still supporting the 970. And womp, the womp. Um, <laughs> HDR support in multi-device configurations. Well, again, legacy stuff, because clearly the, they don't seem to be pushing multi-device well, configurations anymore. Well, I mean, I mean, like, if you, if you have two monitors, one with HDR, one without, like, it makes sense for the driver to be able to support both concurrently and not provide, like, any sort of issue. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good on them. Uh, but but not, 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 not to exclude any of the AMD fanboys or the Intel graphics fanboys from uh, this podcast, yep. we got a new Mesa release as well. And it is the new section, so we get to start off with two uh, rounds of drivers. This one is uh, Mesa 19.2.3. Which, um, yeah, it's available now if you're on any of the Ubuntu's and you have the Padaka Sable PPA, this is the version that you're currently running. And they fixed a couple of uh, issues with Mesa Util, uh, the, some of the tests were failing on x86. They also fixed some uh, trails uh, that were showing up uh, if you had anti-aliasing enabled in Firefox. So... Now that's been uh, properly fixed, and G-Link program crashed when using GCC 903 FLTO Duo. Rolls right off the tongue. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently there wasn't an, uh, an initialized value there. The thing that kind of popped up at me were the uh, two Rad V fixes right there uh, uh, on the top of the changes. Uh, fixed timeout handling for object syncing and removing Mesa locale in it calls for some reason so hey they're improving rad v dude it's yeah, pretty cool i mean 100 <laughs> you got to think about it like right now is a good time we, even though uh we're gonna talk about this in a minute if you have like a 56 5700 or the xt variant granted everything's not perfect right now but there's so much movement. I mean, you genuinely yeah. get to play with something new every month, like a working yeah. card. And issue. they did uh, the the nineteen point three update is going to be the one that has like proper support for the uh, the Navi stuff. So as 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 well as uh, the ACO ship by default, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, but uh, nineteen point two point three is basically a maintenance release. Like they fix bugs, nothing crazy, earth shattering, no real like. Oh, this will get you nine thousand extra frames a second on your fucking DXVK <laughs> nonsense. That, that that that's coming in nineteen point four. You can. It's you can getting quote. better though, and it you know it's not a rumor. AMD cards get faster. They do. <laughs> they uh, do. So, <laughs> well, a, 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 a few, maybe a month to a year after their release, like these ones. AMD is preparing second generation Navi GPUs based on 7 nanometer Navi 21, 22, and 23. They've been spotted in a Linux driver update. So OMG, yeah. start speculating, and uh, okay. That's kind of neat because I really, really want to see something that rattles NVIDIA on the top end, Jordan. Yes, because I mean, I think that this is sort of a not uncommon sentiment because I don't really want to have to drop another G on a video card in a year, in a couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> it does make me happy seeing that these are rolling out, uh, not rolling, but they're being worked on, developed at this stage because for once, just once, I look forward to your hate mail. Uh, I would like to see some baked AMD drivers on the video side from the Radeon group. It, 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 it's tricky. It, it's tricky though because it's really it's really the distribution's fault. Um, in, in in the sense that a lot of them don't necessarily ship the latest and greatest Mesa right off the bat. Uh, I know Fedora doesn't. They'll usually wait a release or two. Uh, Ubuntu will do whatever Ubuntu does, uh, just because like there's a PPA in place but we already. All, we all love AMD. Um, be perfectly honest, like the first week of launch, like for the fifty seven hundred, it didn't matter what PPA you were running. Oh yeah, no, it was it was, it was no. worked <laughs> and like. In its current state right now, some people are like, hey, man, it mostly works. And other people are like, nope, it still hard locks on yeah. X, Y, or Z. Well, I, I mean, I mean, in, in this case, you're like the, the bulk of the Navi architectural supports in place now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so add, adding new cards is just a matter of like adding the support for their various feature sets and whatnot. Um, but like the article does say, they're not going to. So there, there, there is a naming convention that uh, AMD drivers or AMD cards seem to follow with internally within the driver. That seems to indicate what these things are. Apparently, there's like a minor number that the lower it is, the better the card actually is. I don't understand mm -hmm. this. 
But uh, we're okay, not we're so not going to hear using anything that with light means it, it it's going to crush everything. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> we we we, we got we got to like apply the sacred reagents and like sacrifice the chicken. And according <laughs> and according to the gods, uh, we're not going to hear anything concrete until twenty twenty. Arise, Navi. Arise. Yeah, and it, AMD really does need something on the high end to compete with the ten eighty Ti and the twenty eighty Ti and the super but, deepers. Yeah. <laughs> I want some competition on the low end as well, because if you want a powerful PCIe only powered GPU, you're basically stuck with the 10 or 16, 50 series cards. So this is a personal thing. I want that. I would very, very be very, very happy if I could just get a teeny tiny little low profile, fully PCIe powered 5500. That's yeah, that, that, but they they nice. can keep rolling it back, man. We can have the Navi Light. We can have Navi Low Carb, um, Navi Diet, <laughs> um, new, new new Navi. Oh, and then Na- you can bring Navi back the Zero. Navi Classic. Oh yeah, yeah you can have Navi Classic. <laughs> D- D- Diet Navi with lime, vanilla Dude, Navi. Yeah, Doctor Navi. I'm just saying, man. The diet tastes just like the regular. It's awesome. <laughs> Doc Doctor Navi. What does it hurt when I say, "Hey, listen, hey, listen"? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. Spe- spe- Vulcan, uh, we, we've been covering this uh, week to week. Godot adding Vulcan support. They added. They just posted their fifth progress report. It's moving along pretty pretty well. Uh, they have implemented real time lighting with up to three bounces, as well as ambient inclusion. Um, so that's all baked in the engine right now. Uh, most of the work does seem to be uh, focused on the lighting subsystems, and of course they've introduced uh, dynamic lighting objects that can provide their own lighting from their shaders or from the actual object itself. So lots lots of low level stuff uh, that will make your game look very pretty, but it's what needs to get done in order to have like that level of Vulcan support in place. Um, so apparently the the goal now is that Gido 4.0 will have like fully implemented real time global illumination. That's so that's pretty. supposed to be pretty. That's actually supposed to be pretty efficient. Uh, that makes me want to posts. bathe in light, light lifesavers. Is that what they're called? Yeah, candy. Yeah, lifesavers. Yeah, mm-hmm. the the little ringy ones. Yeah. I know candy. Yeah, <laughs> you are candy. You're so sweet. But yeah, one of the things they mentioned is uh, improvements to performance, and uh, they say performance will see some improvements thanks to work from Matthias Goldberg from Ogre 3D. Really, there's a name I haven't <laughs> heard in many years. <laughs> And I figure, you know, since they're bringing up Ogre, why not talk about some Vulcan coming to the Ogre engine? Because, well, well, there it is. Uh, And they actually do give, like, you know, that breakdown of all the Vulcan uh, stuff. It's a very low-level library. A lot of people don't actually know what Vulcan is. I'm looking at the the desktop looks so perfect. (laughs) Next level, what is it? (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's XSC. Uh, okay, never mind. Yes, yes it is. Uh, and yeah, basically it's the folks at Ogre 3D going, well, since we helped Godot get better Vulcan performance, we guess we might as well implement it. And yeah, they actually do like the breakdown of the a lot of misinformation bit that they have. They, yeah, it's the usual spiel from every single developer that's implemented Vulcan in their engine or their game. Vulcan you hard. See, yeah. Well, well the, <laughs> Vulcan there, there, there's, is very difficult. <laughs> the, there's that. There's that. But Matthias raises a really good point. Where like a lot of the Lunar G examples, which is what Valve will tell you to go consult, yes. um, has <laughs> has a lot of stuff that works very well for demos. But when you try to actually bring it in practice, when you're trying to make a game engine, you may want to do things a little bit differently. So um, yeah, he straight up threw some shade at the Lunar G. It's like, no, the Lunar G examples are wrong. The Google examples are. All right, better. for the most part, but there's a couple of things that just aren't that way. It doesn't so, yeah. matter, man. <laughs> DX12 is the future, bro. <laughs> yeah, you can you can run it in Vulcan, so it means that you don't really need to care anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a thing. One last little bit before we get out of here. There's a game off. Game off. Yeah, um, the itch.io game off 2019. It's begun. It started on the first. It ends on the first. <laughs> and the theme this week or this month, this yes, year, this, this unit of time TikTok. epoch is uh, leaps and bounds. <laughs> so all you got to do is make sure that your game will only run on open Suze leap and you're good because hmm. you're bound to leap. Um, you know, um, it's just also doing some good by promoting some open source game tools like Godot, like, um, I don't know, they're, they're, it, it, Lua, Love, 
um, Pi game, libgdx. Are you into JavaScript? Comfortable with C++ or C Sharp? Proficient with Python? Hey, I know, dude. Uh, dangerous with Java. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah every, everyone is dangerous with Java. <laughs> In love with Lua. Dude, this is pretty cool, man. Um, hack on a roguelike dungeon crawler in JavaScript and Nightmare, I mean, Haskell. And uh, craft an 8-bit console game. Pico 8. Yeah. Ooh. Here, 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 here's yeah, a bunch of other Target source, the Pico. That'll tools. run on anything. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's nice that they provide links to like a lot of tools that you can use to make your game very, very easily. If this is the first time yeah, you are doing Yeah, uh, so. I mentioned that uh, when we covered the, their last bundle, the, the links that they have, uh, the ones like, oh, look at all the engines. It's like, oh, oh, that's very nice. It's that neat. Nice it's indeed. pretty big. <laughs> uh, good on that. 3,257 carbon-based entities have joined this one. So that's something to keep track of. We'll talk about yeah, it yep. at a later time. Another December. three weeks for the submissions yeah. to be sent in. Yeah, that's negative three hours from now, according to Jordan. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So Canadian coming up next, we're gonna we're we're gonna do some uh, shady hairstyling in Shadow of the Tom Brader. Yeah, I'm s I'm soaking wet from walking the plank this week we're taking a look welcome back to the chair position <laughs> where the cues must survive trial by fedora k to e neon and deb what deb i am is that like will i am I don't, I don't know it is now needs more needs more auto tune then and only then can the question be asked is it fun this week as i was saying before i realized i should probably introduce the segment we are taking a look at shadow of the tom brader uh it's by edos montreal crystal dynamics nixus software and feral interactive it's done on the foundation engine as we were saying earlier in the show, you can't buy it on its own. You can get it with the DLC for about 60 bucks US. What is it? As Laura Croft races to save the world from a Maya apocalypse using Blender, she must become the Tomb Raider she is destined to be. Um, and we got we had to disclose that it's thanks to you that we're able to review this game. Without your donations via Patreon, we can't afford to buy games. So thank you very much, all of you, our viewing audience. Well, I mean, there's buying games and buying like almost two hundred dollars worth of games. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> with, with with all the DLC included. So, uh, so then had had a, had a Tom Brader work. A Tom, Tom Brady work. Brader, the Bradening. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, over here on Debian Stale. You know what you love at ten point one. Powered by a first-gen Ryzen 1920X Threadripper, 32 gig of joules of RAM, a 2060 video card, and a lot of tenacity. It runs. I mean, as soon as you get done disabling all the feral nag screens, because holy fuck, you just like, yo, you cannot run this game. Evil, boom, boom. You just, get, you just skip all that. And it's like, you're governor. And I'm like, it's a Threadripper. Fuck off. And we get all that together. So everything launched. That was fine. If you don't count the like three times Steam tried and failed to download the shader content for this game, because it just a dick doing that. And it, it finally pulled, you know, you know how it gets down to like that last little bit sometimes that it just sits there and the, it goes down like you're downloading at 1K. Lovely. So that's pretty neat. So let's talk about performance at 1080p. That's all I bothered with with the 2060 because I only have those six gigajoules of video memory RAM. Don't put it on the Ultramax. You're going to have a bad time because it'll load more textures than you have space. So your 75 to 100 frips that you'll be getting all of a sudden become 45. And you're like, why is this happening? That's why it's happening. However, you can run it at high all day long. And it is kind of brilliant. 100% multi-threaded eliteness. Digging that evenly spread across the 24 threads. On my 1920X, I'm seeing about 85 to 100% GPU usage on the 2060 because of that Vulcan hotness, and it's staying between 75 and 90 at 1080p on high. Digging it. Look at it. Slightly less gritty version of the last one. Down with that. One thing that gave me a case of the sides, man, just a little bit. No RTX on, bruh. Even though it's supported by Vulcan, and NVIDIA's like, it's supported by Vulcan, you guys. We even gave it the, like, look. Doom or Quake 2, I should say. Same game. Uh, I was looking forward to playing this at between 9, possibly 12 frames a second. But those dreams will not happen. But hey, man, uh, it's always good. It makes me happy to say this. Clean bill of health from the fine carbon-based entities at Feral with a solid four chairs. 
Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30 64 bit with the i7 6700K with hyper threading on and the mitigations on. Um, yeah, after after the feral scream of no stops screaming at you, um, yeah, it, it runs perfectly fine. I did get one crash though. I died and then it reloaded and then the game crashed. After it loaded, after I restored the game, it got a little bit of a herky jerk, but that fixed itself after a while. So I'm not gonna. I mean, one one crash after about three and a change hours is not enough to ding in a chair. That's fine. Performance at 1080p. Uh, yeah, uh, holds about uh, 122 frames a second at 1080p on Ultra um, with the uh, 1080 Ti. I try. I, at first, I tried uh, playing it at uh, UHD on Ultra, and it looks really, really, really <laughs> good. But it also runs at 45 frames a second. Uh, so I uh, I knocked it down to uh, 1080p, and everything was all happy, and it still looks very, very good. Uh, graphics? Yeah, like I said, everything looks fucking amazing, and it's no surprise that Square makes pretty looking games. Control wise, PlayStation 4 controller works, and I get correct button prompts, so I am oh, happy yeah. for chips. Yep. <clears throat> and over here, now running uh, KD Neon on the 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launches just fine, and yeah. Much like Ven already mentioned, the sheer amount of scaremongering and crap you need to click through on Feral's screen of nope, it, it's just insane. And people just gave you money, Feral, so is that the kind of BS you really want to put in yeah. people's faces? Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to back <laughs> Feral up on this simply because there's been times where I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that opened. Oh yeah. Well, there, 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 there's also there's also the whole like, oh, I can't run this game on Hannah Montana Linux. Like, no, we're not supporting you. Caveat emptor. But that's but fine. It, it, you put that in the uh, system requirements, and if people don't read it, that's their fucking. You problem. know what? You know what? If people read that, they wouldn't yeah, have to people, put them there in the first yeah. place. Pe people don't read, yeah. Pedro. People don't read. <laughs> but yeah, it's also uh, those screams of nope also make it impossible to actually do anything. Say if you're using a Steam controller and you're running a Steam big picture mode session like I do on El Cheapo. Because I tried the game on that too. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess. The game itself works fine. I'm not going to dig in a chair because of Feral's cock-ups, but... There we go. Uh, the game did freeze once, but it was just the once in like three hours of gameplay, so I'm not going to um, dig in a chair for that. I'm just going to chalk it up as a hiccup. The performance, yes, it is considerably more demanding than on the previous one, but it, I, do expero, uh, I do expect that Feral will improve the performance like they did on the previous titles. Right now, I'm getting an average of about 60, 61 FERPs, uh, depending on whether or not I have uh, game mode uh, installed uh, in the uh, the built-in benchmark on the highest settings with motion blur disabled, which is what you're looking at on the video right now. Uh, on El Cheapo at 1080p high with the RX 570, uh, I get around 57 FERPs on average, 1080p, the, the just a high preset. So that that's pretty good. The graphics, yes, they look very pretty. Even the lower presets are very well done. The controls are where I ran into a bit of an issue because I like to have control and shift on the right side of the keyboard and it wouldn't the game wouldn't let me set them. They were just set to the left ones and so I basically had to make use of the extra buttons on my mouse to bind it to page up and page down, just those two keys. And this is an issue I haven't seen since the original Doom 3 came out, because that game had problems. But yeah, that gets dinged the chair because that is a problem, and that is most likely Feral's fault, so three chairs. <laughs> so the moral of the story is that 1080p, my 2060 beats your 1080. Uh, I blame Threadmaker. No, at 1080p, I get about 90 on average. I was just going by the benchmark that you posted in discord well yeah i had a bunch of things running in the background oh, okay. that i read right. a proper one all right <laughs> I see how it well is. Pissing, pissing contest aside uh did you have fun then i don't know I just, why do you gotta always be moving our pissing <laughs> contest to the side man move them up sometimes well that, that then then you you run into the realm of challenge pissing slide, and that's slide, an entirely different pissing story. contest slide ladies and gentlemen ooh, ooh, she's gonna touch the butt she touched the butt nope you see what you made me do you made me hit the wrong button are you happy <laughs> da -da, da -da, da -da. butt touching <laughs> Let's talk about the fun segment because uh, this is the new Tomb Raider. 
Hey, it's the reboot, Ed, and this is part three. Did you like the last two question mark? Well, have some more, fucko. And that's what we have here, man. Uh, Miss Croft, she's in South America. Uh, she stole some shit. Trigger the apocalypse, as one does. Uh, to the game's credit, I gotta say, man. Step one was not build a bow out of scavenged forest <laughs> materials. Good on you, game. Because I was starting to think, like, Laura's solution to everything was like, oh, man, I got a flat on the interstate. Better build a bow. Um, good on that. Uh, all things... Well, let's just say after things get going, it, it's your standard Trinity slaughter fest. Like I, I was starting to have feels, man. I'm like, these are guys just working on the Death Star, man. They're not why, and I'm just ganking them, dude. Just dying everywhere. But uh, after you get done, or if you get bored slaughtering the uh, Trinity characters, it's puzzle solving, murder quest, the game. Just at the end of the day, there might be a plot, but the writing in these games is so full of cringe-inducing. Nope, I just skip it. I, I, I mean, I'm just like, no, no, no. Have to fast forward. I try to listen to a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, I really enjoy these new Tomb Raiders. I enjoy them a lot. It's solid puzzles, broken up with like stealth and like outright firefights. So I think it's a really good mix. That, and it's going to take me 12 to 15 hours to vin my way through it, which is... A V line, man. I'm not on a fetch quest. Uh, if you are a completionist, however, may flying spaghetti monster have mercy on you with these games because they never end. So, in closing, it's a bit all right. It is. Uh, I really kind of wish it had been bundled. Uh, well, it had not been bundled with the optional, originally optional DLC because I, in my feels that. That hurts sales, and this is already like a questionable game with it being very much playable on Proton to begin with. But, um, yeah, like I think as my record with all things Tomb Raider, I wouldn't say check it out, even at the iron price. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I think I've played the same tutorial three fucking times now. Like it's, yeah, either, you, it's you either it's did either you even a gimmick pay attention or to it. I just like yeah, yeah, okay, I know, I know, I know. Well, like they're 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 giving away the story beats and whatnot or whatever, but like it's the same fucking thing over and over again. So this is either a gimmick or a very, very well constructed <laughs> joke that we're all just falling for. Um I mean it complete with the fucking murder slip and slide every time. It's just super geyser. <laughs> and that geyser is Laura's blood coming out of her carotid artery um yeah it's the same of the previous two games you run around so fun puzzles the combat's all right exploration murder so much murder my god gives gives you a lot to do and like ben said there are tons of challenge tombs and artifacts to collect and things to translate and whatnot and it's it's a good time I didn't really feel like I was watching the clock while I was playing the game like I do with a lot of the games that we end up reviewing on the Chairquisition. Um, it's pretty fun. Uh, I, I kind of disagree with Ben. I think the writing is fine for what it is. It's well written enough that I sat down and paid attention to the cutscenes. Yeah, it's a little contrived, but that's like most game plots anyways. I've calibrated my expectations accordingly. Um, yeah, my, my one issue with it is that the game gets kind of derivative at times just because... It, it it it's very it's very much a sign that uh this this team is used to making a game and they want to stay within their comfort zone. They're not doing anything earth shattering, which I I mean I, I I like novelty in my games, but if you if you're buying a Tomb Raider game, it is what it says on the tin. Um yeah, so I'm I'm enjoying my time playing it. Uh it's just more more Tomb Raider. If you didn't get enough of the last one, you can pay sixty dollars and get more. Give it three cheers. Yep. And yeah, the the beginning of the game is a carbon copy of the previous two, but like Ven mentioned, you don't craft a bow. Instead, you craft a knife so you can get your bow. Oh, real uh, quick, I am uh, glad. It, like right at the beginning, like, oh, we're in a plane. I know how this ends. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, if, if, if you are a pilot and Lara Croft comes to offer you a job, run. Just opposite yeah, direction. Just don't. Get the fuck what, out. What about our dude that's always hanging out with Laura? It's like, Aren't you tired of this shit by now, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been so friend zoned too. It's kind of sad, but well, uh, no, you know, I have... you know at, at, at least Laura tries to get him laid. That that <laughs> yeah. <plus on> that. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I am glad that unlike the 2013 uh, Tomb Raider, both Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider actually give you tombs to raid. Yeah, that that's actually really nice. You you see them like it, like each of the main areas. There's like one or two tombs dotted around, and I still very much uh, enjoy the ability to completely ignore the main objective. Basically, the opposite of the Ven uh, way, which is to oh, uh, we're going that way. Okay, then I'm gonna go all around and find everything and pick up all the stuff. Uh, and the game doesn't really make me feel terrible because of it, because there are games that'll rub that in your face. It's like, oh, you took too long. Nope, not here. Uh, there this also time seems it's to a be less... <laughs> yes, two of them. Uh, there also seems to be less of an emphasis on uh, glorifying all the They're different not real ways that Lara can get broke killed down already. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, P- P- Pedro, Pedro, I, w- I, w- I want to get your opinion on this though. Have you noticed that, okay. like, when you fall, there's like always a it's it's never in the c- it's never in the background of the scene where like you actually do the jump, but a spike will just randomly appear and impale Laura as she falls. Yep, <laughs> and it's uh, yeah the, the first uh, the first one the 2013 one that was like Lara Croft murder simulator. It's like seriously, how many different ways can uh, this protagonist person die. Uh, this one, they actually give you like all the different uh, difficulty options, whether it be puzzles, combat, or just the general stuff. And they did a very good job of not, you know, over glorifying it. You still get the death cam of, yeah, like Jordan mentioned, just a spike coming out of uh, Lara's mouth if you happen to fall into a, uh, a pit. But honestly, this is the best one of the bunch in my opinion and if i had to find a gripe to point at it's the series uh the series over reliance on taking control away from you whenever you walk into a new area and there's a glaringly obvious point of interest and the camera wrestles control away from you it's like no you're going to look at the thing and only the thing like the jaguar bit that we just saw and Shot yeah i didn't like it in the first Two, and I certainly don't like it here. Uh, I wish I'd had more time this week to actually play this game, but most of my free time was taken up with like the two hours of setting up Neon. But yeah, when all is said and done, I did very much enjoy what I got to play, except for the systematic use of cutscenes for the plot bits. Three chairs. All right, well, there you go. It's pretty good. You can pay a full price for it. You can wait for it to go on sale. Or if you were a dirty heretic, you have this game already. And you can see how it compares with the Proton version. It, if you like the Tomb Raiders, and if, you know, 60 bucks is not a bad price for, you know, think about, I always think, how much movie would that buy me? That That's a lot of movie, like 12 hours worth. Yeah. You know, 20 that's, bucks that's, that's one viewing of the entire Lord of the Rings extended. Right. So, and good job on the port. They've really refined things. Hopefully, we're going to see Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Vulcan. Then we can re-review that would, it. That would be very good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. All right, coming up next, there be dragons and also library conflicts. Oh. It wasn't the longest show we've ever done, but it certainly contained enough fuel, I think think uh for you to let us know exactly what we got wrong it's, maybe it's point girthy, out some... yeah 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 or maybe even point out something that we were uh almost on the mark but it didn't meet your very very demanding expectations at which point i'm forced to ask what are you doing watching this show if you're that picky Seriously. <laughs> but hey, uh, chances are, if you are a game developer and you'd like us to have a look at your game, you can go to the contact page, fill out the form, make sure you pick LGC Weekly. You can also ask Jordan for relationship advice if that strikes your fancy. But if you are hey. a game developer, make sure you include at least three keys or a build that we can share. Uh, because if you don't, well, we'll just mock you and no one really needs like, you, you know, know bottom tier <laughs> people I, 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 on the internet making I, fun I gotta of you. I got to throw some love, uh, put the keys in the show note, uh, developer get in touch with me oh, Early, cool. earlier this week. And they apparently tracked down our email address from YouTube after unsuccessfully trying to do what it says on that page not to do. 
copy and paste the press release. It will bounce it every time. That's why there's a note there that says, don't do that, Brad. To which they wrote, your contact form is broken, I believe. Um, to which I wrote back, now it's working just fine. Um, <laughs> if you're going to use the contact form, don't fill it with like six or seven links. And like, we, we can Google. We're, we're big boys. We'll be able to find your game. There are some keys in there. We'll do some research. But thanks for going the extra step to get it to us. All right. Coming up first, uh, speaking of game developers, Chris. Yeah, dag Dagger be Dragons. Um, yeah, so uh, he says, uh, we extend mode, actually made several test runs of eight dragons with the Steam play together to get beta. And aside from one instance where the host had terrible speed from their ISP and smoothly as if all six of us were in the same room. Yeah, even if we don't have seven friends, we can at least get we can play at the same time. All right. So there you go. Um, <laughs> it works apparently with eight dragons. That's that's nice. And eight dragons was yeah. the one we covered last week, which is kind of a version of double dragon with up to eight. It's people. quadruple double dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> double dragons in stereo times stereo. Two. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Quadraphonic. <laughs> yeah. Space two, man. Base two. Dude, um, that's good to know, and that's also really good to know that people are testing that. They're like, hey, indeed. All right, because I so a uh, game developer on. Twitter, he was like, yes, finally, being a lazy game dev pays off. And this was in reaction <laughs> to the announcement of Steam Play Together. Yep. Yeah, my, my, my response to that is, no, do your fucking job. <laughs> LGC cares, ladies and gentlemen. Send your hate mail to Jordan at LinuxGameCast.com. So we did bring up the Steam library and the performance issues. People oh, seem yes. to be... <laughs> experiencing and prem writes in he's like yo man i hate the new library i have an i7 6700k and a gtx 970 and sometimes Ooh. steam will stop working when i click on the store library store comma library comma profile comma community comma it shows a blank gray screen period point taken i reverted back to the old steam layout which is no longer an option Womp womp. <laughs> rip, rip prim. Oh, man. But I think yeah. everybody's had... Now, not recently, not, not since the past couple... Even last week, they seemed, at least on my end, to get to where when I clicked on the library, it showed up, which is something that couldn't be said initially. Yeah. Yes, th <laughs> things seem to be working now, at least. So yeah. there's that. It, it, might, it might be kind of costly on the CPU, but... Uh, it, when I click on something, the expected result occurs. Progress. And they do have some GPU acceleration, so that takes some of the load off the CPU a little bit. A little bit, but I mean, <laughs> you, you can load up your CPU and GPU. So, <laughs> well, I, I mean, th 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 this is my fellow brother in Spectreland here, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I feel for you, Prim. I feel for you. Single threaded lifestyle. But it turns out, man, somebody out there has a laptop made of, I don't know, man, just raw, unadulterated because fuck you, and that's why. It's all about the pet yep. games, baby. And, uh, yeah, in uh, contrast uh, to the previous story, FLL has, I have a Pentium uh, laptop with Intel integrated graphics. I didn't have any issues with the Steam client beta slash new library. Weird. It's a bit, uh, it's a big hit on high-end machines. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my, immediate, immediately my brain goes to like flip it talking about how IGPUs can like squeeze out some better performances, better performance under some scenarios because the reduction of trivial mem CP operations. But I, or maybe this is just one of those things where like J the JavaScript VM's like, no, you can't, you can't do this. So we're going to slow everything down and then it will work. My working theory for this one is. That laptop is so slow, you just don't notice. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just like legit. When you're used to like everything else, just and something's chuggy on a modern system. Like, what be this and why be this? Like, you have no reason to cause any bit of trifid or issue with, you know, my 12 core CPU or. I'm also kind of curious to know, like, what operating system uh, Pentium person is running, because it may be like a distro thing, maybe. 
Uh, uh, they're running Windows. Single core still run. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Windows 10 Ultimate. Um, <laughs> well, we have a bunch of people in the chat room right now. You know, they're like uh, Mr. Alert's like, yo, running it on the Xeons, no problem. i7s, no issues. Dual somethings. And it's in I think 30. those are also Xeons. Xeons. Like old ass Xeons, though. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> And do that. Let us know how it's running for you. We were always curious. Uh, sample size can only get bigger, but mm -hmm. I think we got to bounce out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, because on that bombshell, we have cued the music for the 377th time. If you want to get hold of me, you can find me at Vince Stone on Twitter. That's where I'm active. I'm hanging out there. I'll click on hearts. I might reply to you. If you want to chat with me during the week, we all hide in our Discord server. You can get access to that by becoming a beautiful party patron or just say hi in IRC. We are there as well. I'm Jordan Spong. I have all sorts of free samples that you can peruse and taste at The Burning Fool on Twitter or on our Mastodon <coughs> on it. Ask that LinuxGameCast.com. I'm Frojo. And I am Pedro Mateus. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter, and that's about it. Honestly, d d follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you back if you post interesting shit. That I'm not a very demanding person. D yeah. <laughs> you say that, but that's a lie. Yeah, just incessant. I'm dude. really not. <laughs> you should see his so, pre-show so, writer, man. I'm like, dude. Someone, someone make a directory in his home folder, and you will see how demanding he actually is. Oh. <gasps> Roll I'm picky, but not demanding. <laughs> Pain fotainment. That, that's an accurate adjective. <laughs> it's a verb. For... It is now. Oh, man. So many people we got to thank for allowing us to, you know, buy Tomb Raider. That's great. It's episode Clickle Skavit. Patriots of Doom. Yeah. Like Arthur and Mr. Fox Dog. Empty. Empty. The Atomic Ass. Mickle G. Barbara Rhymed. Aldeus. Hoplo. Oh. Mac Geek. Oh. Scoots. The Rumor. And the producers, look at those lovely horses like Jupiter Broadcasting and Dementor and Jupiter Chris Jupiter. and Craig and Jupiter Producer and Erpterman and Dervid and Pobbles. Smashly, Yabo, Michael N, Dan W, Mike W, the Targos. Dirty Deans, Dunder Cheap, Sorceress, Salty, J Girl, Gonzo 2000, X Salty. Is someone ever going to outseat Mike G? Never. Is someone nope. going to do it? <laughs> well, they it's might because there's nothing heavy. It's going to be a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Uh, Frank, get, Frank, get Frank, get out of here. Frank is out of there, man. He's chilling. He's biding his <laughs> time. Frank's just like, man. He, he, he's stealthing like Lara Croft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's big Frank. <laughs> Frankzilla. Oh, no. <laughs> Wiggle Frank. Monolithic Frank. For the win. Mono Frank. As opposed Mono to Stereo Frank. Frank. Mono Frank. <laughs> Death Star Frank. <laughs> God damn it, Frank. Make up your mind. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. We'll see you next week because we didn't learn anything this week. We're not even going to pretend we did. I learned it wasn't a moon. <laughs> it was a moon. Five dudes. <laughs>